Teddy. Can Rigondo figure out this style? He has so far. He has ever since he's hit the scenes. You know, he's won a world championship. He won the gold, as you said, in 2,000 games. He will stay on the outside and try to take away the height and the long arms of Petschkum, and he will keep him off balance by moving side to side. Should be an exciting bout as Guillermo Rigondo of Cuba goes for his second consecutive gold in the Bantamweight division. Bantamweight gold is on the line as Guillermo Regondo of Cuba squares off against Warapat Pechkum of Thailand. Regondo of Cuba, 23 years of age. He is in the red. Pechkum of Thailand, 23 years of age in the blue. Regondo, just 23 years old and already on the verge of a second gold medal. Teddy in Sydney, he captured gold on his 20th birthday. A brilliant boxer with tremendous hand speed. And like most Cubans, if he's going to capture his second goal, it will be with the help of his friends. In this case, the legs, the quick hands. Pechkum surprised the reigning world champion, Agassi Mamadov of Azerbaijan, in the semifinals, winning a 27 to 19 score. Pechkum is going to stop Rogando from capturing that second goal trinket. He's going to have to do it with those long arms. That means he's going to have to have his feet set and punch at the right distance. Keep Rogando outside. Rogando was a bit off balance and he got caught with a straight shot from Pechkum. Thailand has won two medals in the Bantamweight division prior to these Olympic Games, both bronze. Hetchkum has two long arms, but expect the right hand to carry most of the load with the Southpaw Cuban. Coaches love to use that lead right hand when facing a lefty. And Teddy, one of the reasons why Thailand has been very successful in these Olympic Games, as Hetchkum got tagged coming in, They'll clean off the gloves because they have a Cuban coach, Juan Fontanils. They have imported the Cuban style. There's about 13 nations that have hired Cuban coaches to resurrect or establish a program. Pechkum got beat to the punch looking for the right hand against the southpaw. Rogando's got there quicker. It shows you that not only the other muscles in the body of the Cubans are well trained, but the muscle above the shoulders, well trained also. Guillermo Regondo of Cuba on September the 30th of 2000 in Sydney captured the gold medal. And Teddy, he was spectacular in that bout. Just a kid at the time. And he just showed his quickness, his hand speed and showed greatness at a young age. And showed why the Cubans keep on winning. They have a farm system. Sarbelio Fuentes, the head coach of the Cuban team to your right. This is the first Olympic Games that he is the lead man in the corner. And Cuba has already captured three gold medals here in Athens. Get a look at the final standings from 2000. Clarence Vincent of the United States was a bronze medalist in this weight class. Fernando of Cuba in front six to three as we start the second. Petschkum will go as far as he can stretch those long arms out. And as far as Fernando has something to say about it, oh, he's going to make sure that Petschkum does not have the proper landscape to land those long arms. He's going to use his legs, give angles, keep Petschkum off balance, keep him moving his feet. Yes, Petschkum has long arms, but yes, also, he needs to be set to use them. Rigondo understands that very well. As long as Rigondo can keep Petschkum moving his feet, his arms will be controlled. Petschkum thinking about going downstairs, taking some air out of the tires of Rigondo. And doing it with his favorite punch, the right hand. 
And that's one way to stop the movement of Regando. The right hand, as we said early, of the long, wiry Petschkum will either carry him to gold or give him silver. If he can be accurate with the right hand, it'll be gold, like that. If not, and he reaches in, gets over anxious like that, it might be silver. It will be interesting to follow and see. Fernando on his bike a bit here at the end of the second round. When you're the taller man like Petschkum in the blue is, you like to stay outside and use that height. Dictate range. Petschkum not being allowed to do that, being forced to follow, being forced to come in because of the quickness, the fleet-footedness of Rigando in red. Some of the action, left hand from Rigando of Cuba. Quicker hands, more accurate punching, Rigando. Cuba continues to dominate, and there you get a look at Alcides Segata. He was the head coach of the Cuban team from 1964 to 2001. Teddy, he is the man that put the Cuban program in place. The equivalent of Pat Nappy, who for years headed the United States team when they were more prosperous and they won more medals. He set up the program, sort of like Dean Smith did at North Carolina, and for decades he spawned off winners, winning coaches, and winning athletes. And Cigara put the plan in place, and Cuba right now with three gold medals already here in Athens. And like Dean Smith, as you use that name, a good analogy, good comparison from North Carolina, as he used the system of the four-corner offense, Cigara has used this system and impl implemented this system into the Cuban national team. Moving, playing it safe, taking no chances, allowing your opponent to help you, to create offense for you as they come forward and get reckless. Legando opens his lead to eight now. As we've seen throughout this Olympic tournament, when an opponent gets behind, and the opponent that's ahead knows the score, as they all know, because they get it from the corner, and the corner gets it from the stands. The fighter in front goes into his own little version of a prevent defense, leaving the trailing fighter only to look for a Hail Mary punch. Petschkum not being able to unleash his right hand that stopped the movement of Rigando in the second round. Petschkum not getting the setting he wanted. He wanted to be able to sit outside, use that, the long jab. Control Rigando, make Rigando take chances, make Rigando earn real estate, not to be. Rigando got the jump, literally and figuratively, on Petschkum. He's moving, making Petschkum follow him, not allowing Petschkum to be set to lose, use that wingspan. Guillermo Rigando, two minutes away from goal as you get a look at Warapat Petschkum of Thailand. Petschkum trying in vain to land that right hand. What's wrong with this picture? I'll tell you what's wrong with it. The taller Petschkum has to come forward and do that. Give up his height, become small, not tall. Evander Holyfield, the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world and of course the bronze medalist in the light heavyweight division from the 1984 Olympic Games. Checking out the gold medal bouts here in Athens. Holyfield, a gracious heavyweight champion. The appropriate insignia on the cap of Holyfield. Warrior. Indeed he was. Warapat Petschkum of Thailand needs to be a warrior in this final round against Guillermo Regando of Cuba. Regando in quest of a second consecutive gold medal. And he is yet to turn 24. 
Rodondo has used his fleet feet to get the lead. Now he will use distance and the desperation of Rogando to try to keep that lead, get gold, take advantage of Rogando being over anxious, being desperate, reaching like that, and then being able to score like that. Right now, Rogando understands Petschkum will do some of his work for him. He will come in, leave himself a little fat, open for the quick counters of Rogando, who has the liberty of staying outside and picking his spots. Rogando, you might get a look at it in this last minute. He'll use that lead right hand for two things. One for the jab, set up the body shot right there. Gets a caution from the referee, keep it up. He will also use that lead right hand of the southpaw to turn the hook over, but he'll use it for one other thing. He'll miss you sometimes with the jab or with the hook, but he'll leave his right hand out there and turn you. Take your shoulder, take your neck, and turn you off balance. Kenny, there have been three men in Olympic history to win three gold medals in boxing. Laszlo Pop, 1948 middleweight, then two light middleweight goals. And of course, Teofilo Stevenson, three consecutive goals, and Felix Savone, three consecutive goals at heavyweight. Rigondo, after these Olympic Games, is still eligible for two more. He could become the first ever four-time gold medalist in boxing. A very bright and golden future, I would agree with you, for Rigondo. He's dominating Warapod Pechkum. And Guillermo Rigondo of Cuba has won his second consecutive gold medal in the Bantamweight division, dominating Warapat Pechkun. And for the future Olympians, this is what you have to look forward to and you can start preparing now if you're in the weight class of Rigondo. Quick feet, quick hands, good left hand counter. Guillermo Rigondo captured gold in Sydney on his 20th birthday. Now one month shy of his 24th birthday. He captures gold in Athens. Defeating Warapat Pechkum of Thailand 22 to 13. Guillermo Rigondo, golden in Athens. As the Olympic Games come to a close, so does the career of Cuban great Mario Kindelan. 